Uh, we have Elijah. Congressman Cummins. Elijah Cummins has uh, he's been uh, on, on national media talking about the situation. Uh, he's with Derek Valcourt right now down at City Hall. Derek. Yeah, uh, Congressman Cummings, obviously you're following all the developments today. First off, what is your initial reaction? What do you want to say to the people of Baltimore as you witness all this unfold? Uh, we're better than this. And uh, I know that people are upset, but um, this is not the way to bring about change. Uh, the funeral today uh, was a, a very uh, respectful funeral. The family requested that there be no protests today whatsoever. And now when we see uh, policemen being hit and uh, stores being broken into and burned, um, that's, not, that's not who we are. And so I'm asking people to refrain from that. Um, this is our city. After all the cameras are gone, we still have to live here. And sadly, a lot of the businesses that are, are being uh, destroyed are where their neighbors and friends work and in the, in the neighborhoods where they live. And it just makes absolutely no sense. And again, uh, I've, did, I've talked to uh, Valerie Jarrett at the White House today. She gave me a call a, a very short while ago uh, to assure me that uh, the president and the Justice Department would make uh, the Justice Department personnel available to us at any time. And so all we have to do is call. So, you know, I'm sure they've communicated that uh, to the mayor and then the mayor will make that decision. But um, uh, hopefully we will be able to get um, some justice people in to reassure the community that uh, the investigation on the federal level will be very thorough and that uh, hopefully we'll have a Ferguson type uh, pattern and practice investigation of the police department and try to make sure that we do things the way they should be done. We know we know for a fact that uh, the uh, Mr. Gray was not strapped in and he probably should have never been arrested. We know that. And we also know that he had some very serious injuries and he died. And I think people in, from walking around and talking to people, the thing they're most upset about is the idea that there was a police report that he initially said that um, he was arrested without force uh, and without incident. And I think people, that just caused people to really get upset. And a number of people just haven't gotten over that. But there's no excuse whatsoever for burning uh, buildings, breaking windows, uh, and throwing anything at a policeman. What I think the, they create a very dangerous situation. One of the things we're seeing, of, of course, is that this is a lot of young people out there. Now, we're mm -hmm. not sure their exact ages. I don't uh, care what, well, how they are. It doesn't make any difference. People know better than to be breaking in the stores and and burning buildings and putting themselves in danger and putting the police in danger. That's a problem. I'm sorry. I, you will never get me to say that just because somebody is, is young that that's the kind of conduct that's acceptable. Because what it does is it puts them in a situation where they can be harmed, they can be arrested, and, and, and it's not good for our community. And, and, and by the way, it takes away, it, it basically becomes uh, a distraction for what we have to be about the business of, of doing. And that is keeping one Baltimore together. And as we go on, obviously, this is Monday. It were, there weren't even supposed to be any kind of protest That's today. exactly right. Are, are you worried as we go forward? We've got, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I promise you, I promise you. Uh, we will bring this under control. I'm about to meet with about 150 ministers uh, who are anxious and ready to do uh, a lot to try to work with the community. I just uh, uh, finished talking to some uh, young people who are wanting to pull together about 300 of the leaders of some of this stuff uh, that want to sit down and talk to the mayor and yours truly. And so we're going to get get all of it, but we've got a we've got work to do. But but understand, there are people. Who are very upset and so but on the one hand we've got to maintain an uh, order on, on the other hand we've got to assure people that uh, what happened to freddie gray uh, will not happen again period 
Oh, Congressman Elijah Cummings speaking to us from outside of City Hall, where there is quite a large police presence, and there is going to be a bit more response from city police and other law enforcement agencies helping out as the evening goes on. Back to you. Um, Derek, I wonder if we can ask you to ask Elijah Cummings one more question there, and that is, if the ministers are meeting, is it reasonable to assume that they will have any power to bring this under control? Can the ministers really yeah, do anything? The, the question the anchors are asking, if the ministers and, and, and a meeting with a large group of ministers, do they have any power to help bring this under control? How so can they they've got They've got a lot of power. Um, you know, you got to remember, uh, all of these churches uh, that they represent have a lot of men. Um, I know my church in and of itself probably has about 3,000 men in it. Um, and so it's a matter of organizing and, and, and then working with the police to see how they want us to assist them. Uh, we're gonna, no matter what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to make sure that we're effective and efficient in whatever we do. We don't wanna put anybody in danger, but the police, I know, will welcome some help and they just have to let us know what they want us to do. Thank you very much, Congressman. He's, a, he's got a busy schedule. He has other interviews to do, so I'm gonna let him go. Okay. All right, thank you, Derek.